Good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. Uh, welcome you to our Twilight Talks on Baptism. Tonight we are finishing up 1 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verses 20 through 22. Tyler's looking up some other verses, so while he's looking those up, I'm going to read the passage. It says, Who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype, or this is a like figure, which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven is the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. <clears throat> baptism is not the removal of the filth of the flesh. Baptism is the answer of a good conscience toward God. How? By the resurrection. When we're baptized into Christ, we're united with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. resurrection. As Tyler's going to read to us from Romans 6, 3 through 5. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also should walk in newness of life. For we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Baptism is us saying we believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. Baptism is saying that we believe his word who told us to be baptized. That he has the right to command that because he, verse 22, is the one who has gone into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. The angels and authorities and powers that have all been made subject to him. He has the right to command it. Just like God had the right to command them in the Old Testament, at the same Spirit of Christ that ministered in the Old Testament that told them to prepare the ark, that saved them through water, is the same Christ who saves us now. How does Christ save us? Through baptism. It's the same place of separation. The old man is already dead in his trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2 tells us. We are buried with him by baptism into death, and we are raised with him. Colossians 2, 12, 11 and 12, Tyler. And him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Faith in the working of God in the resurrection. That's why you were baptized. Read 12 again, Tyler. Slow it down. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. Pause. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him. You were buried with him in baptism, but you have to be buried with him in baptism, in which baptism you are also now raised with him. How, Tyler? Uh, through faith in the working of God. Through faith in the working of God. Who raised him from the dead. Who raised him from the dead. Your faith in God's work in baptism raises you with him. That's why it's the answer of a good conscience is what First Peter 3 is talking about. That's you saying, you know what God, I take you at your word. I believe you. Look, I'd like to tell you baptism makes sense to me. You say, well, the only reason you believe it is because you was raised with it. No. At one time, I probably only believed it because I was raised with it. We've done long past that bridge. I pretty much believe almost nothing I was raised with because I was raised with it. Most everything I believe now is because I've tested pretty much everything I can. And I've only kept a handful of things I was raised with that I believe are inviolable and worthwhile. Baptism is one of those that if I could get rid of it, I would. But I can't. I, I don't even know how many lessons we've done on baptism, Tyler. A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's like, I don't know, 30 or 40, I don't know. If I did not believe the scripture taught this, I would not spend the time on it. And said, so what about faith? What do we do, man? Like 80, 90? 
lessons, a hundred, I don't know, on faith. Uh, we don't deny faith. We don't deny any of it. It's all part and parcel. But at the end of the day, until you believe what Jesus commanded, because he commanded it, and until you believe it the way he said it, and you respond to that command in faith, you'll never be saved with the answer of a good conscience toward God. Mm -hmm. Noah had to build the ark the way God said so that when God made the difference between the world of the damned and the world of the saved, and that difference maker was the water, because till the water came, even inside that ark, the saved were still in the world of the damned. But once that water came, then the saved were separated. We make that choice here because of an answer of good conscience. Do you have anything else you want to add to my? No, sir. With that, we bid you good evening. We hope you've enjoyed this one. We've only got uh, a few more passages about baptism um, to look at next week. But we do hope to see you back on Sunday morning, 9.30, 10.30 Eastern Time, either live stream or in person, Lake Butler Church of Christ, Lake Butler, Florida. Till then.